Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and I'm here to usher you in through your weekend and pretty much the rest of the winter because this is my last show of 2018. So I'll be back in January 2nd, but you can enjoy me, uh, this particular episode, for the remainder of the month of December. Uh, you know, I guess the closest thing I'm <laughs> doing for Christmas is doing a bit of ye- uh, red on my shirt. Uh, but other than that, we're not going to do too much about the holidays, uh, but we do have a holiday video uh, provided by the kids at the flagship program, so we'll have that a little bit later in the show. So stay tuned for that. Um, right now, let's talk about some weather. It's getting warmer. It's going to be beautiful this weekend. Uh, it's going to be increasing clouds. Uh, rain is likely going to happen tonight, but of course, Saturday, you're going to have showers, mo- uh, mostly sunny. Saturday night, it's going to be clear. Sunday, it's going to be mostly sunny, and all the weather is going to be in the highs of the, I mean, the low 40s pretty much all week long. It's going to be the, the low is going to be the 30s, mixtures of 20s, but pretty much we're going to see most of those uh, temperatures be warm enough, but not too bad at all. So let's talk about some s- on the snow. So if you go to onthesnow.com, you can find out how much snow has fallen in the last uh, 24 and 72 hours within some of the uh, local resorts in Montana. Big Sky Ski Resort had four inches in the last 72 hours. Uh, looks like they're good to go. The green dot usually indicates that they're good for skiing. Uh, Whitefish Mountain Ski Resort saw a lot of snow in the last 72 hours, but of course they had the last... Uh, uh, inch in the last 24 hours we're going to have some rain and stuff this weekend as well so you can expect some of the places up here like Bridger Bowl, Discovery Ski Area and uh, other stuff like Red Lodge to see a lot more snow uh, as we get into uh, the weekend as well. Alright so let's talk about some news that are happening. Uh, drunk driving tends to be very common in Missoula if not in all of Montana but Missoula County court officials are looking for a better treatment program in an uh, $87,000 grant from the Montana Department of Transportation to initiate to initiate road, which is responsible opportunities and accountability for drivers, uh, which will work with the offenders found to be on high risk to, to re-offend and with high need of treatment. Uh, this, this is an application pro- process that only allows about 20 participants at a time. Uh, of course, this is an opportunity for a lot of people to get jail time off and probationary uh, things as well as they go on this holistic approach. Each person is different and this program aims to help each person with their own struggles with sobriety. Uh, the most common way to avoid uh, drinking in the first place is a lot of times to avoid the, the folks and the uh, areas that uh, promote drinking. So that's uh, kind of hard a lot of times, especially in a lot of places that promote uh, drinking as well as a lot of tap rooms and whatnot. But that's here, nor here, nor there. In state news, um, Miles City athletic trainer has been arrested for possession of child porn, but that's where the story ends. Um, James Eric Doc Jensen's story really begins back when he was athletic director of the local high school in Miles City. Many victims came forward following this arrest last September, but many allegations were outside the state statute of limitations. But of course, many uh, victims are forming a, a, a suit towards Jensen. The lawsuit ag- uh, alleges Jensen used the position to groom and then sexually molest dozens of a young athletes from 1978 to 1996, along with Jensen, uh, uh, Custer County District High School and the Miles City Unified School District. The lawsuit also names John Doe's 1 to 200 representing any school employee who may have known about the alleged abuse but failed to stop it. So that's kind of what's happening in the state of Montana. And the big thing that's happening in the nation is the federal judge sentenced Donald Trump's former lawyer Michael Cohen to three years in prison Wednesday following Cohen's pl- guilty plea to a number of political and financial crimes. The other night he appeared on ABC to uh, talk about uh, Trump being a liar. Uh, This is a big deal because uh, him implicated that Trump had knowledge and involvement with these. Cohen said that he's been living in a personal and mental uh, incarceration ever since he agreed to work for the business mogul. It was blind loyalty to this man, he said, that led him to choose the path of darkness, not light. Judge William Pauley was asked why he didn't give Cohen any leniency for the literary year prison sentence, but argued that Cohen nonetheless still deserved a substantial uh, substantial prison term. First, Cohen told authorities that Trump had directed him to arrange payments to two women ahead of Election Day 2012 to keep them quiet about sexual relationships they said that they had with Trump. Of course, allegations Trump denies, not to mention that real estate deals with the Russian officials that went on during the campaign. Judge said that Mr. Trump repeated lies cannot um, 
contradict stubborn facts. And here's some of the wrap-up that are happening in the news. A couple things include a potential shutdown of the government um, of, of the wall if the wall is not built, according to Donald Trump. There's a couple other news stories as well. Uh, the first uh, openly uh, trans person won a boxing match, uh, won a belt for a boxing match. You can look up all these stories and more, uh, npr.org. And there's a lot of stuff going on, but there's even more stuff going on as time goes on. But I won't be here to uh, kind of give you the highlights of what's happening. But I do have some city council aid on the show, and we're going to be talking about all sorts of cool things that involve the park and recreation. But Without further ado, I got some new programs for you guys that are going to be airing this week. It, the Montana Book Festival is going is going to be airing on MCAT pretty much all uh, winter long. You can see the uh, fe the uh, 2018 Parade of Lights, which is just the 16th annual Parade of Lights, which will be airing as well. Uh, we got a couple other lecture series that will be going on. So we're basically going to be showing a lot of the uh, programs that we've been filming the last couple of months here at the University of Montana and beyond. So you can see a lot of those and more um, right here and right now. Well, they examined what is required for proof of Indian status. And they looked at Bruce, they looked at Maggie, and in Zepeda, they explained that under the Bruce, Bruce's first prong, the government need only prove that the, the defendant has some quantum of Indian blood, whether or not traceable to a federally recognized tribe and clarified that the government must prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant, one, has some quantum of Indian blood and two, is a member of or affiliated with a federally recognized tribe and the defendant must have been an Indian at the time of the incident. I don't know what that means. He wants to go, he wants to go to F sharp, but doesn't have it. So he has to do some, uh, some little doodle. I would go to F sharp for sure, but not the students. You know, you have to at least, <laughs> at least get your bachelor's <laughs> before you start changing notes. And you might get uh, some flack from somebody, say you're playing notes that the composer didn't write. And you can have a good reason, say the piano stopped at F, he wanted more. I think we should give him more because now we have the notes. Uh, it's a moral judgment, you know, if you're going to change or not. This is my parrot, Petey. Petey, say hi to everybody. Ah, hello, hello, hello. Oh. Hmm. Wait a second here. Captain Hooked on Boats, these folks are much older than the folks you usually <laughs> hang out with. Yes, Petey, they are. These are adults, but guess what? They love books just as much as we do. Oh, well, I guess I like them already. <laughs> you know, um, the kids love Petey, and if I had ever shown up without him, truly, they would have mutinied. <laughs> no, not bringing him out. I would sit down all ready to start sharing time, and they'd say, where's Petey? And I'd say, well, you, you've got to put up with boring old me first, and then we'll bring Petey out. But uh, the interesting thing was, Petey served as my counterpoint. So I tried to be a, a cheerful pirate, and he was kind of a, an honorary pi uh, parrot. Whereas I loved to share treasure, he was pretty stingy. And so I could work through him to teach the kids how to be positive and how to be kind to others and how much fun sharing could be. And so they loved him in spite of all that. And you know, puppeteers, or I should say real puppeteers, will tell you that they often don't like anybody touching their puppets, kids to touch the puppets, because they get them dirty and they get them smudged and they, they ruin them. But I broke that rule right off the bat. And this is the most loved, kissed, hugged, squeezed, and sneezed on puppet <laughs> you will ever want to meet. University. Now his father has told them that he has a very good mind, but he says, Theodore, you must build up your body. And so to that end, he did started to do a lot of exercises, tried to fight this terrible asthma he had, but he was building up his body. When he got to Havid, he was, uh, he, he was gladly um, uh, in there with, with all these other young men, and he takes up boxing. 
and uh, so he becomes, you know, this this part-time uh, uh, student pugilist. And one of his favorite occasions was that in one boxing match, he wins the match, overcomes his opponent, and takes away, you know, a loving cup uh, uh, as part of that. And it would become one of, one of his most prized possessions after learning, uh, after learning the, the beginnings of the pugilistic arts in that, which he would keep up his entire life. And uh, sometimes even boxing with professional boxers, as long as he lived. Well, it is the last Friday for me of 2018, so I have a full plate of movies that are coming out here. So I won't be here for most of Christmas, so here's a bunch of movies that you can't ignore this winter time. Uh, you know, you you know, uh, you have a lot of time on the plate during the Christmas time and a lot of times to uh, get your kids to uh, not annoy you as much as to send them to a movie. But a lot of times these movies are eh. We'll see. But, of course, here's the perfect example of a kid's movie for kids um, or the kids at heart, blah, 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 all that crap. You know how they like to sell to, you know, like to parents as well? It's just always like, oh, this is for kids, but it's also for the kids at heart. So, anyways, welcome uh, Miles Morales in a movie about a yet another origin story. Yes, it is an origin story movie, first and foremost, but they are going to sell you on more iterations from the 20s Spider-Man to Sam Raimi's Spider-Man to Spider-Gwen for the ladies and Spider-Ham for the little, little kids who just want to seek some comic relief. Watch these animated movie that puts on another mask to hide their owner rights to a franchise that's kind of, kind of up in the air. Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. Up next, we got... Uh, again, with uh, Deadpool 2, uh, more like Deadpool 2.5, the squeak squeak wool, as in his latest movie wasn't enough, we have a lighter, more family take on the, the Merc with the Mouth. Uh, can I just say that this is just a cash grab? First and foremost, even he said it. You know, there's a point where meta be kind of gets kind of old, and this is kind of like one of those things. So, of course, um, this is like uh, when um, James Cameron re-released uh, Avatar with about 15 minutes of bonus footage. People are going to see it, maybe, maybe not, but, you know, kind of just think about waiting until it comes out on DVD or whatever. All right, The Mule. Um, well, old man Eastwood is back and is doing a movie about being old and existing in a young man's world. See, this time around, as he's a drug mule in the young man's drug mule world, uh, as he's getting his last score before quitting. But guess what? Probably something goes wrong because it almost always has to on the last score. Um, watch as his family falls apart because he was unable to provide some kind of um, re uh, relatable circumstances that you will probably empathize with somebody who works in illegal drug trade. Kind of like, you know, Breaking Bad, but with Clint Eastwood, but not really. All right, up next we got... We got a post-apocalyptic post teen heartthrob drama type deal. So it's a uh, very CGI heavy that uh, over, uh, which you know has over zero plot and plenty of colors. Mortal Engines produced by Peter Jackson to keep making movies. He's kind of felt that doesn't need any more location shoots and decided just to go green screen for pretty much everything. Um, basically, um, and imagines a better world where he's still relevant. That was kind of rude, but Lord of the Rings was my childhood, and The Hobbit, I suppose, was Willow. Um, or was it um, King Kong? Okay, anyways, up next we got Aquaman, a movie that's kind of like one of those uh, things that uh, the lead star, uh, Jason Momoa, in the, uh, Jason Momoa in the tidal wave role of Arthur Curry. Um, but every day when you're walking down the street, everybody has a different point of view, and I say, hey, what do you expect from a run-of-the-mill origin story like Aquaman? Up next, we got Haley Steinfeld from such acclaimed movies as True Grit and Edge of Seventeen comes a movie about a girl who is coming of age, but also has a giant robot in the process, or car pet thing. Uh, anyways, this uh, expect the movie to see a lot of 80 references in the genre that has always done well in the box office, but story-wise, not necessarily so much, but they keep making this movie as long as they keep making money. That's the kind of idea. It's like a trade-off. You know, like, you can, you only continue these movies because you pay to watch these movies. So, you know, the whole idea, okay, so anyways, this is the kind of set of the movie. It's basically, she finds a robot, she doesn't understand the robot, and then there's robots after this robot, she fights for this robot, there's, uh, there's the government that gets involved because they don't know really what, know what's going on because of being gaslit by the bad guys, and at the end, I guess, um, he fights them off, 
saving her, but then has to abandon her because he's more trouble for her than he's worth. So that's kind of how it ends. I don't, I've don't. i never seen it, but that's definitely a spoiler r- routine. But up next, we got yet a return to a, fam, a family favorite, a, a classic uh, sh- movie short thing deal. Well, of course, we can welcome back to Mary Poppins. Um, how long are you staying again? So anyways, this is happening pretty much Christmas time. This is a musical that follows the Banks kids um, as they're dealing with adult stuff because they are adults and their kids are uh, working with Mary Poppins, swings in or uh, flies in with a magical um, uh, bit of sass and a whole lot of magic for some kids. This movie, it will make you feel good and it won't make you think, um, which, you know, it's kind of like what movies should do because a lot of times movies are just like, that's a little on the nose for the time. What other, a movie that just kind of like, you know, is good. <laughs> Anyways, that's your uh, pre-critic for the winter season. It's a, it's, it's a full mixed bag of all sorts of things going on here as well. But I have another move for you guys. It's, uh, it's pretty great. But without further ado, here is the uh, last flagship Friday of the year. And I'll be back January to for a new ushering and a new flagship uh, program as well. Tonight on Movie News, we will be playing a new movie. Alfredo and the Cat Eraser. It's not a good uh, title, but it's a great movie, right? Yeah. Lost and found. Uh. Oh. Oh, what's in here? Ooh, present. I found the perfect gift! <laughs> I found the perfect gift! Ow! What the heck, man? Sorry? What for? This! Ah! It's just a note. But it was, there was, I put a cat in there. Well, there's something written on it. Do you want to read it? Sure. Under something that has vitamin C, you will find what you seek. What does that mean? We got this. Dun dun! Fine, I'll do it myself. What's this? It's a clue! Dang, this is so cool! Hi! Where did you come from? Under the water fountain. Duh. Where else would I come from? What are you doing here? Um, I'm standing, I'm breathing. I was hiding under the water fountain. You want to come with me on my quest? Yes! So, how's your been? Dave, like, been doing? Um, pretty good. I'm hiding under water fountains, but nobody's noticed me yet. I don't know how that is. It's really weird. Should we go out here? All right, why not? It's dark in there. Mm. Well, I can't do it. Oh, it's light now. That's nice. Wait a second. So you expect me to believe that your friend went hit by a trash can, disappeared, and then you walked around, found a water fountain, and this person jumped up from behind it. He hid behind a trash can? And he disappeared and left me alone? And then she popped up behind, or was hiding under a fountain and scared the crap out of me. Yeah. I wasn't hiding. I was just sitting. 
and you just didn't see me. And so then I said hello, and you got scared. So, I bet you want this. You have it? Is that what your quest was about? Because yes. you know you never told me. That's true. This has been boring and long. Take it, I'm out of here. Yay! I've got it! This quest has just started. Um, didn't you just finish it? This is going to find my best friend Alfredo because he disappeared behind a trash can and I must find him and this will lead me to him, hopefully. I'm not sure, he got it for a present. Emotional. Yeah. Hello, my name is Anne, and this is um, me. Just me, don't look into it or anything. Okay, here's the recap of the movie. So Alfredo found this a magical gift in the lost and found. Um, I didn't come in till later because she was drinking the water fountain and I was underneath the water fountain. So I came up to say hi, but I scared her. As I was saying, then he went to his best friend, his loyalist little buddy and he, she opened the gift and found a note and what was on the note was a cat J just a cat was it very exciting Alfredo and through shame and overall embarrassment Alfredo hid behind a trash can and disappeared we haven't seen him since so the um, sad and lonely <clears throat> person sat and cried for a bit, uh, talked to herself maybe, questionable, and then she found another water fountain before that one and had an awesome drink from that one and then got tired and then met her. And I allegedly scared her. So we allegedly walked down the hallway together and we allegedly found darkness. I don't remember anything more after the great dark. We talked with him a bit, and then he gave us the present. So, but it hasn't stopped yet. I liked him. He was a little bit harsh, but you know, you know what I mean. And to the weather. So it's probably going to be, um, it's gonna be cold. Melting snow. It's gonna be cold. And uh, wet and cold. Climate change. <laughs> yeah, but that's it for the weather. Um, now we'll be taking a break and we'll see you later. Look at all of these coats. All of these coats. And they've all been lost. <laughs> I lost my coat, help me. Have you lost something? I lost something. Well, come to the Lost and Found! <laughs> yeah, that's why I had to put my dog down. It was really sad. And... Oh, yeah, welcome back. And now, back to the movie. This is going to find Alfredo. Hey, there's Alfredo. It's just a picture. Good enough. Hi, Alfredo! Hi! He's not waving. of our movie. It was filmed in 2018 with little or no money and with support from the flagship program. Thank you flagship program and good night.
that's it. <laughs> that's what we'll do. Uh, that's as much as I'm going to show you. There, there's probably about like 15 more seconds left in there, but I'm just going to end it there. Welcome back, guys. Now let's talk about some city council. So they had the committee reports today as well. Um, they're going to be talking about um, this and that. They're going to talk about a little bit of this. Let me just get my notes together. Uh, parks and conservation. Every year, the uh, recreation division complies with uh, data and informational concerning program activities across the three major programs: aquatic, outdoor recreation. Sports and wellness for over six years. Uh, Ryan Years, Parks and Rec with Fort Missoula and more. Talk about the update on what Parks and Rec do and also a little bit of more stuff as well. So here's Ryan Years. And one of the stories that's really stuck from Fort Missoula Regional Park was when um, it was after the state high school AA soccer tournament uh, two years ago. And our Hellgate uh, boys team won the tournament that year. After the after the final game was played, everybody's cheering, having fun. Somebody asked if I could give uh, an older woman a ride to her car in one of our carts, and, and gladly we were on a far field. Did that and drove over, and she was so elated. She's in her 80s um, that she got to be there and witness her grandson win the championship in her hometown and without that bond without that project we wouldn't have had a tournament like that in missoula and we wouldn't have been able to create that that memory and that experience so all right so that was ryan years uh, basically uh kind of like giving you a little background on the former missoula regional park in the past many sports that have hosted large tournaments were unable to do that in Missoula, so they, a lot of times they had to outsource somewhere else in the state to another town or another city in, this, uh, in the state. $38 million of the $42 million bond that passed 2013-2014 uh, project went into this project. Uh, $3 million went to uh, parks, uh, I mean it went to uh, other parks and trails, while the million dollars went to uh, just basically playground upgrades and more. Uh, so Ryan continued to talk about the future of the site. So here's Ryan just talking about uh, what you can expect to see in terms of um, activities and more. And we're actively trying to, to create more events and um, bring in more sponsorships to, uh, to increase the reach and, and the uses of Fort Missoula Regional Park. Our own adult sports program that's uh, within sports and wellness, we run adult and youth sport leagues, and it's grown tremendously between lacrosse, soccer, flag football, pickleball, this is an example of uh, a program that started only about five, six years ago. And in that time, in 2017, on, from what we could record on the open play sessions we had, we had over 5,000 people participate. Um, this year, when this was created, we were at about 2,000, and that's with uh, a slightly different schedule and a shortened season. But we we're seeing tremendous growth in the sport. Those dedicated courts are used every morning every evening and um, this community I'd say it's one of the most well used amenities out at Fort Missoula Regional Park. All right, so uh, many other programs as well as he went on to talk about during the slideshow. Um, I, I just want to kind of bypass that. Uh, of course, many questions were asked whether or not the park is also self-sustainable. Many people are wondering, is this like, oh, once you pay for the parks, you're going to have to pay for the maintenance and whatnot like that. But of course, the rough estimate of $100,000 um, of revenue that was provided from the community for these parks in last year, the costs are subject to change and adjust over time, of of course, the master fee scheduling is going to be updated, which means costs and to rent pavilions and their park amenities will cost more. Public hearing is set for January for the master fee schedule, but of course, uh, the meeting more about this will also happen next Wednesday. And of course, uh, Gwen Jones talks about how um, the city can help the parks department and help it make, make it grow and have it more available for people as well. Uh, I think the staff, the people running the programs um, have been just huge in terms of the incremental growth that we've seen. And it it's, reminds me of when my kids are in school and you just get one of those awesome teachers for the year. It's the same thing. It, it, they can have great training, but it's a combination of personality and energy and training and all of that. And um, I 
I think we're getting some pretty amazing people in parks who are running these programs with kids. Is Mara, you had a comment? All right, so that was uh, Gwen Jones uh, reflecting on that and the past. Um, up next, we got Omega uh, Witter with more, which is the Missoula Outdoor Recreational and Education, which is looking for a permanent facility to house programs that support active Missoula youth. Although a lot of times they do a lot of outdoor programs as well, um, they want to be able to basically have a, a place with a meet and greet regardless. We, we follow the MCPS standards that if it drops below, you know, I think it's 10 degrees, then we try and head inside. We'll go bowling. We go visit Eric swimming. We go visit City Life and play inside there. We'll go to the eight different museums and that sort of stuff. But we don't have an indoor space. And that is very difficult when you have 60 kids on early out on Thursday. Um, but we, for the most part, we put jackets on and we teach the Montana motto that there's no such thing as bad weather, just bad attitudes. Thanks. All right. So, yeah, the, for, I mean, um, that's a little bit more on this meeting. Um, um, no pun intended. Stacey, Ander um, Stacey Anderson praises the more program with Parks and Recreation as well. This is uh, after school activities with the Parks and Recs to help engage in after school activities. But the passion that you have is so evident in the growth, and I just think that you're worth every penny that we put into you, and hopefully we can get you some more vans so you can do yes. some more work. Um, yeah, and I just, you know, I moved, I've told the story, and I'll say it again, because I think this is the best evidence, is I moved my nephews from Great Falls to here at the end of the school year, and they were very concerned about moving to Missoula and put them in the Parks and Rec program and by the end of the summer they were like Missoula is the best place <laughs> ever and we love it and my little uh, 11 year old nephew is like I'm going to live in Missoula forever and I'm going to be a firefighter and <laughs> it just, it's adorable and they were definitely the kids um, exhausted at the end of the day and there was just such a wide variety and these are the kids who would prefer to be home on their tablets but yet every day they were out playing and moving their bodies and experiencing Missoula and all the cool things and you know thank you so much I really appreciate all right so that was um Stacey Anderson about that um so two hundred thousand dollars uh the aquatic center are looking to keep in the fiscal year 2020 budget because many uh monies that go into deficit towards paying off currents in Splash Montana Jesse Ramos has voiced his opinion to see if there are any revenues in place to help break even uh but that would require a study of some kind and the media ended there. I don't want to get too much into this because they kind of alluded to this, and that's the one thing that was one of the biggest things that Jesse uh, Ramos uh, for the city council was talking about earlier in the 2019 fiscal year approval last um, summer. And right now, uh, fiscal year 2020, uh, budget committee meetings will start sometime in January, February, where they're going to be talking about budgeting for all these programs and more. But right now, this is kind of like updated preludes and informational stuff that you guys can look up yourself about what are these programs are doing and how much they cost. And therefore, so that's what a lot of these community meetings are for, just kind of like the brass tax. But I think it's really important. Uh, but up next, we got community of the whole. Um, and I think I'm going to uh, do a little break up um, with this with some um, art clip for you guys. This is at the Clay Studio. These uh, I have two brand new art clips for you guys, which after this <laughs> will pretty much be done uh, because they're ending on uh, December 22nd. So here is one starting at the Clay Studio of Missoula.
Currently, the uh, Clay Studio Missoula is doing their holiday sale all the way until, I believe, December 22nd, which is next Friday. You guys can check out some of the uh, Clay um, mugs and all that sorts of stuff made by local and uh, regional artists um, for your uh, coffee desires. All right. Let's talk about uh, the rest of the city council stuff. Usually I kind of do uh, your events that are going on here, but since it's, you know, it's the last Friday of December, I'm going to um, I'm gonna let it, uh, let you guys go on that one. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> of course, give me the whole, they're talking about the sister city program, uh, New Zealand, um, and also Germany, but this one is particularly about New Zealand because back in October of this year, we had some folks come down from New Zealand, and Dr. Udu Fluck went to New Zealand to help improve ties with New Zealand. So here is a little nice intro from um, Udo to talk more about this. And the idea of this network is to encourage cultural and educational exchanges for student and community members in Missoula. Um, and we have two sister cities. We have um, Palmerston North in New Zealand and Neckargemünd in Germany. Um, the, the problem had been that the sister city partnerships um, have not been very active until this year, and we're just thrilled about this. Because All right, so just this year, uh, there, there was a big uh, push for international uh, um, strengthening, especially between Missoula and um, New Zealand, and th this whole presentation at the community of the whole was all about this. Um, Germany and, of course, like uh, Neckargemünde, uh, Neckargemünde, Germany, and uh, Palmerston North, New Zealand, are, of the course, the two cities that we've had ties with. Missoula has ties with international schools, the universities of Japan, Saudi Arabia, and smaller programs from Bhutan. But, of course, the, those are University of Montana programs. The city of Missoula has different terms of playing hometown deals and whatnot. Of course, 2010 was the last time folks from New Zealand even visited Missoula before the resurgence, which was more than a feel-good program. Uh, for seven days in October, New Zealand folks uh, hung out and had a full Missoula experience. Uh, they saw powwows, they saw um, um, sports games, all that and more, um, courtesy of Missoula Hospitality. They met the mayor, John Engen, and all that stuff. Of course, you can watch the meeting, and they have a nice slideshow of all this going on there as well. Dr. Fluck talks about the language immersion and more to strengthen ties amongst uh, the groups. New programming this fall, um, I developed a culture and language immersion program um, called CLIP uh, for students and for professionals and community members. That was a proposal that I sent to Palmerston North and they accepted it. And so uh, that was a move into this more strategic approach. And then we did a virtual global art exhibit featuring a local Missoula artist um, that I'm going to talk more about here in a minute. That was also an idea of, of connecting the sister cities. The CLIP program um, offers opportunities in two areas. The one is for uh, students, the idea of sort of a program for emerging global leaders um, to increase student flow from Massey University to Missoula. There's never been a problem of UM students wanting to go to Massey University, but um, the return sort of visit has been a little on the weak side. And so uh, the mayor, uh, Grant Smith, uh, put together a budget for uh, stipends to help students uh, participate in this and basically get uh, some money to, um, uh, for tickets or for living expenses. Which, um, you know, is part of the biggest thing about a lot of these programs is, like, um, getting there. That's always been, like, the big deal in terms of trying to get, sister, like, like, make sister city ties a lot better. A lot of times you're kind of, like, a um, in charge of your own wayfare there. A lot of student exchange programs all have to do with your, you're paying initially the tuition uh, from your hometown, which a lot of times is nice if you have a low tuition, but then if you go to another school, um, a lot of the exchange programs aren't, uh, aren't you know, back and forth. It's more of a if one school goes to a completely another school, well, the school from that um, university goes to, so let's say, you know, like a school from Saudi Arabia goes to the University of Montana, but then somebody at the University of Montana would not go to Saudi Arabia. They'd probably go to like Turkey or whatever, Istanbul. So... Those are kind of like some of the um, things about uh, difference between um, doing like exchange programs versus uh, sister city programs, which is completely different. So um, let's talk about, uh, let's see. 
course, the CLIP, the CLIP program was conceived to create an educational-based program to help high schoolers a chance to go abroad and get a real-life credit and support, along with more information for adult education programs such as art and cultural exchange. Um, Dr. Fluck did talk about the virtual gallery, which could mean more for the future of art and exchange and culture exchange. The International uh, Choral Festival is every three years, which is a big part of a lot of sister city programs and a lot of uh, countries to come down in Missoula. This is done every three years because programming is really crazy and trying to get a lot of choirs down here. That means it's a lot of people and they are always looking for host families as well. That's one of the things they talk about as well. The virtual gallery, which is a uh, kind of interactive uh, virtual reality type gallery that people can see from any points of the world as long as they have like some kind of like phone or visor or whatever. Um, it's going to be happening on first night in December. It's it's part of their uh, international ties as well, but of, of course they're doing a film festival which is happening out of the Roxy, which starts in February, which will end in June um, as they go into the international waters. Um, Heather Harp talks about how we can grow in the ties and somewhat. So here is Heather Harp. The importance of why these sister city relationships are integral to our global view of the world. And uh, former mayor Dan Chemis wrote a book called The Good City and the Good Life. And he talked, actually dedicated an entire chapter to this concept of sister cities. When he was mayor, um, the relationship with uh, Palmerston North was not especially strong, and he was in the throes of actually starting one with Nekegemund in Germany. And he talked about when we look at our budgets, for example, we're always thinking about like how much can we help our folks. And when we look at what seems to be spending money on these relationships with other communities elsewhere in the world, they should seem very secondary compared compared to the primary need of making sure we have food in people's bellies and a roof over their heads. And yet if we don't be able to put that in global context, we are missing out on some tremendous opportunities. And so as we proceed, I want us to remember that because without these relationships in the world, we are an island. And we can't be. We need those connections. We need those relationships with everyone in this world. Thank you. All right. So um, I'm going to end uh, that there. Uh, of course, that was pretty much towards the end of the meeting. For more information, go to artsmissoula.org. But of course, to watch this meeting and more, you go to mcat.org or go to ci.missoula.mt.us. Here is an art clip from the Zach. And uh, after that, I'll wrap up the show and you'll see a little bit of um, wh where you can find out more information about my show and MCAT. All right, guys, welcome back. If you want to see those clips and more and all this stuff, you can log on to MCAT.org. MCAT.org is your local resource for everything MCAT. It's a wonderful website. It's great. You can like us on Facebook and more. If you like us on Facebook, you can um, 
get involved with any of our live streams. Uh, we live stream our basketball this season. Uh, winter sports have started, and basketball is um, could be happening tonight. But of course, next week it'll be happening happening um, Tuesday, Friday, and Saturday. So we have three basketball games, pretty much back to back to back. Tonight we have a basketball game starting around 7 p.m., so you guys can check that out. If you like us on Facebook, you get notified, or you can check us out, Missoula's Community Media Resource Online as well. If you want to learn more about my show, you can go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. It's so nice we made you write it out twice. It is a wonderful resource for everything wake up -y. Um You can learn about myself and more. Uh, you just click, you just uh, can Google me at Wake Up Missoula. You can find me on YouTube, Facebook, and the Twitter. Um, all this and more, mcat.org. Of course. I'm ending the show. It is uh, time for the show to end. I usually uh, usually reserve this time for some events, but I'm just going to bypass that altogether. And I'm going to wish you guys a happy, happy holidays. I hope you guys have a Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, all that stuff. Hanukkah ended last Sunday. So uh, a lot of different things are happening for anybody who wants to celebrate the holidays. Uh, Tamarack Grieve Resource Center is a great place for people who are a kind of a, are, are pretty much blue in the holiday season. So you can check that out and more. There's a lot of great resources, and you can find out what's going on in downtown and more by logging on to missoulaevents.net um, Missoula Downtown Partnership as well uh, missoulaedowntown.com is another resource as well so if you want to find out more about all this stuff and you can also find out about first night buttons by going on to your local grocery stores you can ask inquire because there's many sponsorships in terms of first night Missoula which is the New Year's Eve party for anybody who wants to have family friendly fun on New Year's Eve courtesy of the host at the University of Montana at the, it's going to be at the UC Center. So anyways, that's a little bit of this and there. There's a lot of stuff going on as well. So, uh, you know, take it one day at a time. So for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Sky Ramp. I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful Christmas break. I'm taking some time off. It's going to be great. It's going to be wonderful. Um, you're going to wonder what I'm going to be doing. Less than something, for sure. So for, without further ado, I'm Scott Ramp, and have a good 2018.